Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, significant percentage of population across the globe is suffering from uh, gastritis. I mean, acute gastritis or a chronic gastritis and eventually leading to peptic ulcer, uh, esophagitis, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. So, what is the common cause of gastritis? So, if you look into that angle, so there is a bacteria that leads to a gastritis commonly and that bacteria is called as Helicobacter pylori, simply referred as H. pylori. So, this H. pylori, it is a gram-negative bacteria which will um, invade a mucosal layer of our stomach and eventually it might lead to um, it may reach epithelial layer as well so in the mucosal layer which is uh, the uh, inner covering of the stomach which is kind of towards the luminal side of it so uh, bacteria gets into that and try to colonize that so as you all know that uh, 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 stomach is uh, secreting uh, hydrochloric acid uh, which will help in digestion of our food especially the proteins so this hydrochloric acid, it will keep a lower pH and it is not conducive environment for H. pylori to thrive in that particular uh, area. That's why what H. pylori will do. So H. pylori, it will secrete an enzyme called urease. And this urease enzyme, what it does, it's going to take a urea, it's going to act on the urea, which is taken from the blood. So the urea will break down into carbon dioxide and ammonia. And as you know, ammonia, it is uh, having a higher pH. Uh, so because of this production of carbon dioxide and ammonia, because of breakdown of urea, so the, uh, it tried to neutralize the pH in the area where it is invaded so that it will make its colony, it will proliferate there and all that. That's how it will colonize. So what is the problem with this? So the problem is this ammonia is a toxic molecule and this ammonia can uh, have a deleterious effect or a toxic effect on the cells surrounding. So and also what this bacteria like H. pylori infection what it does it will make it will produce uh, or it will lead to secretion of cytotoxins and these cytotoxins eventually will lead to changes in the epithelial cell layer. Uh, so it lead to dysregulation of uh, capillary epithelium. And also what happens is uh, in order to synthesize this urea uh, means in order to uh, make ammonium ion by utilizing urea. So uh, there is a kind of diversion of uh, uh, amino acid called arginine to go into urea side so that urease enzyme acts on it and makes more and more ammonia for the bacteria. So that's how the bacteria changes the environment. Because of this what happens, so there can be a changes in the nitric oxide production uh, because arginine is also used for nitric oxide as well. So uh, because of these changes, so there can be alteration in the epithelial lining of the gastric mucosa. That's one thing. The second thing is um, there are three parts of the stomach as uh, like it's uh, uh, fundus, body and pylorus. So in the pylorus, uh, there is a less acid effect of on the pylorus is relatively less compared to the body uh, because it is synthesized means it is coming from the fundus and all that. So more, uh, sometimes what happens this H. pylori, it will colonize the pylorus and thereby in the pylorus, there are cells called G cells and the G cells, they will synthesize and secrete gastrin. This is an endocrine hormone. And that gastrin will go to parietal cells of the fundus and the body there and then they will synthesize and secrete more and more hydrochloric acid. So because of this what happens there will be overload of hydrochloric acid and also there is changes in the nitric oxide production. So overall all this will contribute to development of peptic ulcer and also it will uh, loosen or uh, um, weaken the lower esophageal sphincter and that may lead to uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorder eventually leading to esophagitis uh, and then uh, metaplastic change in the esophagus which may eventually lead to cancer formation or the carcinogenesis in the esophagus. And also in the stomach lining as well there can be development of adenocarcinoma of the stomach. The reason for this is the effect of cytotoxins that are produced by H. pylori and also there is increased generation of reactive oxygen spaces, reactive nitrogen spaces because of the stress that is uh, created by H. pylori in the region wherever they are invading. 
and overall because of this what happens there will be DNA damage and leading to mutation and eventually that lead to uh, metaplastic changes in the gastric mucosal cells and that eventually lead to adenocarcinoma of the stomach. So, these are uh, certain uh, serious consequences of uh, H. pylori infection. Apart from uh, H. pylori leading to inflammation of the gastric mucosa leading to gastritis and this gastritis uh, can go run for a long period of time and it may lead to pain in the stomach it, uh, up, uh, in the empty stomach or maybe after taking food and patient may have nausea, patient may have vomiting, bloating, uh, you know burping uh, and then the distension of the abdomen. So, uh, and also sometimes there can be erosion of the mucosal layer of the stomach and esophagus and it may lead to, you know, uh, blood in the uh, stool uh, that eventually may lead to hemoglobin, lower hemoglobin and anemia signs and symptoms. So, like this um, H. pylori infection might uh, lead to a var var variety of complications. So, how do you diagnose H. pylori infection? Note that about uh, you know 90% uh, of the people who are infected with H. pylori they may not show signs and symptoms and suddenly if they show adenocarcinoma signs like changes in the metaplastic changes in the stomach that's when they will realize the, it may be because of H. pylori infection. So uh, otherwise only 10 to 20% of pati uh, patients will show signs and symptoms of H. pylori. Uh, so, the diagnosis is, um, you, uh, there are a couple of diagnostic approaches, one is antigen or antibody testing and the commonly done, is, uh, done, uh, done test is carbon dioxide urea, urea breath test. That means uh, uh, urea which is labeled by, you know, radio labeled carbons is uh, given and then uh, urea enzyme will break that and then release carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide that is radio labeled carbon dioxide which is exhaled if that is measured and that's a direct uh, in indication of uh, there is a H. pylori infection. So um, this is what is done and then uh, prevention is generally the approach for prevention is uh, uh, vaccination for H. pylori which is under uh, clinical trial but the treatment is uh, triple therapy. In triple therapy so uh, amoxicillin or uh, you know tenidazole, metronidazole, uh, so along with that clarithromycin and then proton pump inhibitor. These are the three things that are used in triple therapy and also dietary modification, lifestyle changes, alternate uh, you know uh, therapies uh, can be used in uh, treating uh, H. pylori infection. So, this is uh, in brief about uh, H. pylori infection. I hope this video uh, uh, is you uh, has been useful to you and uh, you are able to learn something new or add to your already existing information uh, that you already knew about this topic so thanks for watching and i will see you in my next video till then you take care